Hello Options Traders, welcome back everyone. I was just doing a presentation last night and the topic of short interest ratio came up and some other traders were saying, what in the world is a short interest ratio? I've never heard of it. So I thought maybe it would help some of the traders in this group. So let's take a look at the short interest ratio, what it is, where you can find it, and how you interpret it. But to understand the short interest ratio, you have to understand short selling. So what is short selling? Well, short selling is a type of trading. And what you're going to do is to borrow shares from the broker. So I know right off the bat, it sounds like it's complicated. It's not, it's very easy. Think of it like when you have a credit card. It's part of the agreement. If I swipe this card, I'm going to borrow money. It's just instantaneous. Well, if you have a margin account with your broker, it's just that quick to short sell shares of stock. If you have what's called a cash account, you would not be able to sell short. But if you have an options account, you must have a margin agreement, and that means you would have the ability to short shares. Now, without going into the details, you will need to post a margin requirement. So if you don't have sufficient funds to meet the margin requirement, you would not be able to. But the process is actually fairly simple. And what you're going to do is that once you've borrowed these shares, you're going to sell them in the open market just as if you own them. So the process is really just as quick as going into your platform, say sell short 100 shares of IBM and it's done. You've borrowed them from the broker and you've sold them into the market just as if they were sitting in your account. Now the catch is when you do that, you have an obligation to repay the same number of shares back to the broker. That's the trick. It is not the same dollar amount. So even though I might have shorted 100 shares at 100 bucks for $10,000 worth of stock, I do not owe $10,000 worth of stock back. That would make the entire process not work. I owe 100 shares back. And what you're hoping to do is to buy back at a cheaper price, in which case you will profit by the difference. So if you think about it, investors try to buy low and sell high. Short sellers are doing the opposite. They're trying to sell high and buy low. But notice they're doing the same thing, just in the reverse order. So again, if we sell 100 shares of stock at $100 per share, and at some point in the future, it drops to let's say 95, and we buy them back, we've profited by the $5 difference. Now for the most part, there is no time limit on how long you have to repay these shares as long as you can continue meeting any maintenance calls that might be happening along the way if that stock price is actually going up and against you. But it's not like they say you've got two weeks or a month to repay them. You can keep them short as long as you'd like. There are other exceptions when you get into what are called hard to borrow situations. And I'll show you in just a moment how you can tell if it's a hard to borrow stock. But for the most part, any of your big name companies, you've got basically forever to repurchase these shares. If you do enter a short sale, this is what your profit and loss diagram looks like. So I think most of you know how to read these, but down here are the various stock prices. And along the vertical axis are the resulting profits and losses. So if we shorted shares at $100 per share, this is what our profit and loss diagram looks like. Notice that where we cross this zero line right here is at 100. That's our break even point. But if the stock price falls, notice that we start getting into profitable territory. Now the downside is if the stock price rises, we end up into losing territory. So one of the things you can see right off the bat is that short selling is absolutely one of the most dangerous types of trading that there is because there's no theoretical limit on how high a stock's price can go. As a side note, for all the options traders out there, this is where put options can really shine. We can still get all of those negative deltas to the downside, but we have a fraction of the risk to the upside. But if you are shorting shares of stock, this is what your risk graph looks like. You get all of the profits, at least down to a stock price of zero, in exchange for unlimited risk to the upside. Now, I did have some people last night that were commenting that 
this shouldn't even be legal. And I've heard this argument before. People say, oh, it's un-American. You're betting on a stock's demise. It's only putting more volatility into the market. You hear all of these types of arguments. But they're absolutely ludicrous when you hear them because think about what a market is designed to do, or at least one of the functions is to determine a stock's value. So do you want to ask the smartest CPA what a share of IBM is worth? Or do you want to ask the entire world? And let's get the collective opinion of everyone, not just the accountants and the CPAs, but also from the legal side, from the marketing side, from the business world. What does everybody think this stock is worth? And so obviously, if the collective opinion is that this stock is undervalued, you would have an incentive to buy it. You're going to buy it low and potentially sell it higher for a profit. That's your incentive for voting, so to speak, that the stock is undervalued. Well, you can't have a system where investors can only vote that it's undervalued. Think about it. For the most part, a stock's price could only go higher. Yeah, you might get some long positions that end up selling, but you have no way of truly forcing that price lower through short selling like you can if you want to buy to put upward pressure on it. You need to be able to vote that the stock is overvalued. And the way that you do that and to put your money where your mouth is and to say this stock is overvalued is to have the ability to short sell. So now that you understand what short selling is, what is the short interest ratio? Well, it's very simple. There's a couple of terms that are related. The first one is the short interest. And short interest is simply the number of shares that are short. So if we've got a stock that's got 10 million shares outstanding and a million shares are short, the short interest is 1 million shares. The short interest ratio, on the other hand, is the number of shares short divided by the average daily volume. And of course, the average daily volume could be calculated over a week or 10 days or 30 days, but it's some recent period of time. So for instance, let's say that we have 3 million shares short. That's the short interest. But on average, the stock trades a million shares per day. So we just divide those out and we would say that the short interest ratio, sometimes abbreviated SIR, is three. In other words, what we're saying is that on average, it would take about three days worth of trading to clear out all of these short shares. Of course, in the real world, what usually happens is that you get some announcement from the company or it's broken through resistance or something happens to where all of these short sellers panic and they rush in there and buy them back very quickly. So it's probably not going to take three days worth of trading to clear these out. Instead, what you're likely to see is you know, maybe 4 million shares trading on a particular day and all of these short sales get cleared out. But it still gives us an idea of, on average, how many days worth of trading would it take to clear out these shares? So the short interest ratio, what exactly does it mean? Well, the higher the number, the more bearish at least a segment of the market is. So in the short run, it indicates a greater degree of bearishness on this stock. However, in the long run, it represents future buying pressure. So a lot of times the investors actually see it as a contrarian indicator because what they're really saying is, hey guys, I know that we're right. I know this stock's price is going to be going higher in the future and you are going to have to join in the buying. And so we're gonna get this nice big bump up in buying pressure at some point in the future. Now, of course, whether that becomes true or not remains to be seen, but that's why the long-term investors who like this company actually like to see a large short interest ratio. So again, what usually happens is rather than these short sales getting slowly taken out of the market, it happens on one particular day and you'll see this big spike in volume and that's usually what we call a short squeeze. The short positions couldn't take the heat anymore and they just got squeezed out of it and they absolutely had to go buy these shares back. And so again, you get this big spike in volume and it clears out most of those shorts. The problem with the short interest ratio though is that it's not updated in real time. It's updated about every two weeks, I believe on the 15th and at the end of the month. But you'll see that once you find that number, it's going to remain the same 
for days and days and days. It just doesn't change. But still, it's not a bad idea to go in and take a look on some companies, whether you're bullish or bearish, and at least take a look at what that short interest ratio is. So how do you find it? Well, there's a number of sites that will show it. Your broker's platform might even show it. But a very simple way is to go to Yahoo. You can simply go to finance.yahoo.com. So let's go take a look. All right, so now here we are in finance.yahoo.com, which you can see I've just typed directly into my browser. You could actually go to yahoo.com and click on the link that says finance, brings you to the same page. But right here at the top, just type in your ticker symbol. So let's do Tesla. And then along this row right here, you get a lot of different links that you can click on. You can get historical data if you wanna download past stock prices. You can look at analysis financial information, but right here on statistics is where you're going to find short interest ratio. So let's click there. So we've got valuation measures, financial highlights, trading information. But if you come down here to where it says share statistics, and if you look down here about halfway through number of shares short, this is simply the short interest, 31.78 million or about 32 million shares. But right below that is the short ratio. Now they actually call it the short ratio, not the short interest ratio, but it's the same thing. And it's 3.16. So what they're saying is that if you take roughly these 32 million shares divided by the average daily volume, which you can see up here, at least over the past 10 days, here it is over the past three months, that you should get 3.16. Now, if you actually do this calculation in Yahoo, you're going to find out that it doesn't match. And the reason is, is that if you look at some of this data over here, you see these little footnotes. This is coming from multiple sources or calculated by Yahoo. But down here, the short ratio has a footnote of a four. It's provided by Morningstar. So yeah, Yahoo could have calculated it, but they don't. They just pull it in from Morningstar. So for those of you who might actually be doing the calculation and going, how come it's not adding up? That's why. But you could. You could take 31.78 divided by 8.79, and you're going to get about 3.6 or so. But again, what it's telling us is that roughly it's going to take a little over three, maybe three and a half days worth of trading to clear out these short shares, at least on average. Some related statistics down here, short percent of the float. So the float shares are those that are available to the public. It's not all of the shares outstanding. Sometimes a company holds them in what are called treasury stock. But of the shares that are available for you and me, investors out there, it's about 23 and a half, getting close to a quarter of the shares that are short. If you look at the short percent of shares outstanding, it's going to be a little less. And again, that's because all of the shares outstanding aren't necessarily available to all of us. So that number is about 18%. So again, very large short interest ratio in Tesla. Down below that, shares short for the prior month, about 36 million. Again, for right now, we're at about 32 million, so it's gone down a little bit. So if you were bullish on this company, you'd like to see that, that people aren't quite as bearish as they were. Now, one other thing to cover is to figure out if a stock is easy to borrow or not. And that's usually what's called the, you know, is it on the hard to borrow list? And so most of your broker's platforms will show that to you. So let me show you over on the E-Trade platform. So now we're into the E-Trade platform and to find out if shares are easy or difficult to borrow, you'll wanna come over here to the quote screen. So click that tab right there and right down here, it's showing us that IBM is easy to borrow. So if you are going to venture out into the dangerous world of short selling, make absolutely certain that it is not hard to borrow. Because if it's hard to borrow, you might get called into what's called a buy-in from your broker. And they're going to say, hey, the person who owns these shares needs them back. We can't find shares out in the open market. So we need to close this position now. So you really don't want to get caught into that. Let's go take a look at Tesla. So you can see that Tesla is also on the easy to borrow list. And that's also because there's so many shares outstanding. Now I do know that there's a company with a related ticker, TLSA, that is, and if you look right here, hard to borrow. So of course it's, you can see there's no volume. There's it's a $3 stock. This is not the type of thing that you'd want to short. 
But the point is that if you see this, you really want to think twice about shorting those shares. So I hope that helps you to understand what the short interest ratio is. And for any stocks that you might be trading, whether you're bullish or bearish, you might want to take a look and actually track that ratio. For those who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and a brand new strategy lab for 2019 at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.